Hi guys. All right, today we're going to be talking about order of operations. Uh, your learning target is I will use order of operations to solve problems. And your essential question is how can I use order of operations to solve problems? So if you want to pause the video now so that you can copy your learning target and essential question. Okay, welcome back. Okay, so mathematicians that have established rules called the order of operations in which to perform operations like addition, subtraction, multiplication, and division. Okay, now you might ask yourself, why do we need such a rule? Well, here's an example of why we need order of operations in math. It says, the rugby, the rugby club orders 20 new jerseys, the manufacturer charges a $100 setup fee and $15 per shirt. The total cost is represented by the equation C, which is the cost, is equal to $100, which is what they want to charge for the setup fee, plus 15 times N. The reason that you're multiplying 15 times N here is because they're charging you $15 per shirt. Okay? Now, there's two people that are working out this problem. Pedro decided to multiply 15 times 20 first and got 300. Then he added the $100 of the setup fee and he got an answer of 400. David decided to add 100 plus 15 first, then multiply by 20. and he got a total of two thousand three hundred dollars. Now, who is correct? Well, if you notice, the only one that is charging you fifteen dollars per shirt is the fifteen, which means that if you decide to add first, that means you're gonna be charged a hundred dollars for every shirt as well, which is not what they want you to do. So, Pedro is correct. And it's very important that you make sure that you follow the order of operations because, especially in real life situations like this one, you don't want to get charged extra. $400 is a lot cheaper than $2,300. So, what are the order of operations? Well, the first one, you have to compute any expressions within the parentheses, so that means parentheses comes first. The second one, you have to compute any exponents. Exponents come second. For the third one, you multiply or divide whichever one comes first from left to right. It's very important that you know that. And the fourth one, you add or subtract whichever one comes first from left to right. Make sure you copy this down in your spiral. Okay, so we're going to do an example together. Here we have 3 plus 4 times 5 divided by parentheses 2 times 2 minus 7 to the second power. So remember, what comes first? Well, parentheses, so that means that this is what I'm going to work out first. What is 2 times 2? Well, 2 times 2 is 4. So here we are. The second step is exponents, which is right here. These are my exponents. So what is 7 to the second power? Well, make sure you multiply 7 times 7, not 7 times 2. What is 7 times 7? Well, 49. Then from there, we have a new equation. See how I'm bringing everything else down with me? Make sure you do that as well. The only thing that's changing is the part that you're working out at that time. So here, the only thing that I changed was, I don't have this anymore, now it's a 4. I don't have the 7 to the second power anymore, now it's a 49. So from here, I have to multiply or divide from left to right. Don't forget, it has to be left to right. So if I start on left, what comes first? Well, multiplication comes first. So 4 times 5 is going to give me 20. Then, I have to keep going because I still have a division problem. So 20 divided by 4 
he's going to give me five. Okay, see how I'm still bringing down the three? Because I haven't used it yet. Every time I have to bring it down with me. Same thing, same thing over here, 49. Bring it down with me. All right, last part. We have to add or subtract, again, from left to right. So if I look here, what am I going to do first? Well, I'm going to add. What's 3 plus 5? Well, that's 8 minus, bring down the 49. Here we are. So here we have 8 minus 49. So finally, my answer is going to be negative. 41 because I have more negatives and positives. And this is your answer to the order of operations. Make sure you copy this down as well. Alright, so now all I need you all to do is to work out this problem by yourself for homework. Make sure you bring it to class prepared. Follow the same steps that I did. If you need to go back and look at the other problem that we did together, do that as well. Don't forget, whenever you don't use something, you have to bring it down with you. Okay? Thank you.